Hey guys, tonight we're going to grill up two beautiful bone-in ribeye steaks for a quick Tuesday night dinner. It's our anniversary month and we're celebrating. We celebrate all month, just like my birthday. Hey, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. This is the channel that takes you on barbecue crawls to some fun, interesting places. We show you some backyard recipes that you can try at home. And what else do we do, babe? Some awesome indoor cooking with awesome, Sassy. Awesome indoor cooking, yes, definitely. So you're in the right place, and we're glad you can come back. So I was out shopping the other day, and I picked up a couple of beautiful bone-in ribeyes. They're, they're choice cuts of meat, but as you see, they're, they're really high-graded choice uh, pieces that look beautiful to, to us. They're nice and thick, and we were uh, looking for some red meat. Everybody's doing turkey, everybody's doing turkey legs, turkey breasts. Turkey this, turkey, turkey that. that. You know, um, we love turkey too. We've done a few turkey videos. I'll put a card up here to our turkey breast video. But we thought we'd mix it up today with some beef. All right, guys, like we said, we have a couple beautiful bone-in ribeye steaks here that we picked up uh, the other day from a really good butcher here in town. Um, it's actually, a, probably recognize his... Uh, labeling and um, <laughs> so they have really good quality meat uh, we were I was in kind of a hurry and so it was just a quick uh, drive by grab a couple steaks and uh, and shot off and now we're ready to cook them it's it's a Tuesday night it's a week night I'm gonna show you a really fast but delicious way to cook up these ribeye steaks all right so what we have here is a couple of nice little ribeye steaks uh, yeah they're about oh I don't know Two and a half pounds each. Uh, they're, not, uh, they're not huge, but they're definitely uh, nice colored, and uh, I really like the way they looked in the uh, in the butcher. Oh, that's cabinet. a nice marbling, Dave. Feels good. And uh, as you can see, not too shabby. Um, you know, I was gonna trim them, and I still may. Um, but you know, a good. Backyard cook when you're yielding for the quantity instead of a uh, competition. There really isn't a whole lot to trim. And um, likes the I don't know. Yeah, Sassy likes it nice and crispy, a little bit more well done. Where I'm gonna, I'm gonna take mine up to about 125 and take it off the grill, and I'll probably leave hers on. Oh, probably up to about 130 just to make sure it gets a little bit more well done. So, like I said, I was going to trim these, but uh, yeah, I think I'm not going to trim them this time. I think we'll just go ahead and leave them alone. So the first thing I'm going to do here, give it a little bit of this avocado spray. It's going on the grill, and it definitely could use a little help. Probably not a lot of help, but uh, this avocado spray has a very high flash point or burn point. And just a little bit will do. And I tell you, it, it just makes such a huge difference. Next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to do just a little bit of the salt. Doesn't need a whole lot because I'm going to do something else. And uh, I'm going to do layers. So just a little, I'm sorry, just a little bit of this pepper. Just want to get that up, push it in. Maybe do the edges a little bit. Again, just a little bit. Don't want to overdo it on the pepper. Now what we have here as a nice little treat is this Caribbean Bailey's habanero sea salt that Sassy picked up. And uh, this is why I didn't put a whole lot of pepper on the steaks. We're going to give this a little shot. I've already tasted it. It's definitely got a little bit of a bite. And it's really salty and chunky, so it's going to really work well with these steaks. So we're just going to... Put a little bit on here, try to do it nice and even, gotcha. tap it down, then again on the edges, don't need a whole lot on the edges, that's alright, a little bit more on the other side, tap it down, and we'll set that aside, the next one, this is a real chunky 
kind of product so you gotta shake it up once in a while. Tap it down. That avocado oil really helps with uh, sticking it to the meat. Just gonna put that there. All right, I'm gonna let all those flavors get real happy with each other, real friendly with each other. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the grill ready. All right, so one of the products you guys have seen me use quite a bit here for starting the chimney on the uh, charcoal grill are these Weber lighter cubes here. They're basically paraffin wax starters. And they don't have any taste, they don't leave any residue in the charcoal at all, and uh, they just burn away harmlessly. It's a really good product. Um, a little tricky to get out of the little um, foil bag or the, the foil tray, um, but it's, it's packed really well because it is flammable. And uh, and but uh, you know when you start peeling these out, you know thing it starts crumbling and the little uh, chunks tend to kind of get away from you. So still like it, but uh, when I'm in a rush, um, I'm gonna try something new here. So. So what I'm going to try tonight are these Royal Oak tumbleweeds, these little uh, tumbleweed things that I've seen other folks use. And um, they look kind of interesting, so we're going to go ahead and give these things a shot. butter bath that we love so much when uh, cooking these ribeyes. Uh, it's my favorite butter bath. I really highly recommend it. Um, so we're going to use about a quarter cup of uh, butter and this is really important. A couple fresh sprigs of rosemary. We took this out of Sassy's garden so it's fresh. And then three or four, five, six, seven, eight cloves of garlic um, peeled, mash them a little bit and then what you want to do is put another quarter cup of avocado oil into a pan so when you put the butter in there um, it melts down and raises the, the, uh, the burn temperature so you don't burn the butter so that's what the oil is for okay so it's going to look something like that got the rosemary got the garlic the oil the butter and we're just going to go with really low heat and we just want to warm that up really gently again I I'm doing this while the uh, charcoal chimney is coming up to temperature. So I'm going to go really low on this, maybe low simmer, and get all them flavors nice and happy with each other. Alright guys, you've seen me use these uh, grill grates quite a bit, and uh, except tonight, I'm going to flip them over and use the flat side of the grill grates. And uh, these things are really handy. Um, they prevent flare-ups. I'll show you the other side. They have a really nice, uh, accurately machined edge here to give you the, just the perfect grill marks. And uh, they slide together. And this particular set is shaped for the Weber grill. It slides together like that. You flip it over. Kind of clean it off. I'm going to use a grill spray on these. Now you could use the fat that you trimmed off of your steak, butter, anything you want, anything that won't burn. Because I'm going to get these up to about 500 degrees, as, as hot as I can get it, because I really want to sear those steaks really good. So again, we're going to be putting the charcoal um, in the Weber. I'm going to put the grate on there, and then I'm just going to slide this on in. And I'm going to be paid, paying attention to the surface temperature with this laser thermometer I have, make sure you get yourself a good one that reads above 600 degrees because these things will max out on these grill rates. These things can really get hot, especially on the Weber here. Sometimes too much. I'm also going to be monitoring the temperature with one of these Thermoworks thermopens, and these things are really great. They're instant read. It's got a nice sharp point. It's got an auto on, auto off feature. As soon as you stow that away, they shut off. 
As soon as you fold it out, it comes back on. You can do centigrade or Celsius. Oh, I'm sorry, Fahrenheit or Celsius. And if you flip it around, the display will flip around for you. Really neat. So I'll leave a link in the description down below and you can go check both these products out. And the grill grates included because I really highly recommend this particular setup to get the perfect series. cooking up some delicious ribeye steaks right now and I'm gonna make a quick side dish today I'm going to be preparing some red air fried potatoes with garlic a little bit of parsley and some of my new spice Tony's catcher catcher catcheries and a couple of sprays of avocado oil then I'm gonna put them in here and I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna put the temperature at 400. This is my new air fryer. This is my second cook on this bad boy. And I'm going to cook them for about 20 minutes. So don't go anywhere. So those steaks are searing. It's going to get really smoky, really hot. So I'm going to be turning these things a lot sooner and more often than if I was to go for a competition, sear marks and grate marks. I'm not really worried about that. I just want evenness. I'm going to be doing it fast. Next time you see me, it's probably going to be in the kitchen. All right, here we go. So Sassy likes it well done. I think we both do a little bit. We like the char. We definitely got the char from those uh, reverse grilling grates. Uh, the, the rosemary and butter and oil and garlic definitely did its job. I'm going to save these little pieces of garlic here as a kind of a dessert. So I let them set for about uh, 10 minutes. And we'll go ahead and cut in. Now you can see the spinalis right here, which is... Uh, on every ribeye, good ribeye steak, you want to buy with a nice big spinalis. And that's the part that's right up against that rib meat. And that's the area you want. During competition, a lot of this gets, actually gets trimmed away and you end up tying this into kind of a hockey puck shape or oval. Let's take a look at this. All right, that looks really nice. That's almost a perfect medium right there. I'd say that's, that's pink without being bloody. It's warm in the middle. And it's almost a nice well done. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Cut a piece of spinalis. Yeah, that's... Nicely well done. I think it came out great. But you know, the real taste test is going to be with Sassy. What you got there, baby? I have got some red roasted air fried potatoes mm. in my new air fryer. Yeah, they look good. I actually cooked these for 15 minutes, not 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I thought I would check them because I figure wasn't like chicken you know and um they're cooked perfectly they taste delicious this is gonna go great with our steak speaking of steak uh maybe why don't you take a little bite of that steak right there and tell me what you think oh did you cut this for me my favorite I part sure did what do you think mm. oh wow this is delicious right. oh my gosh the habanero sea salt delicious i got that today from amazon babe mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, what do you mm. think about it? Mm. The like steak it? is cooked perfectly. It's nice and charred on the outside like I like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, delicious. They're my favorite. Look at that. Yeah. Can you get a little focus on that going? All right, 
turn it. Let me see that meat. Yeah, a little bit more on the well done side, but that's how we like it, right? Well, that's the outside. Look at the inside. Not gorgeous. Cooked perfectly as far as I'm concerned. There you go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Got this nice, ooh, nice buttery garlic to go with it. That's really nice. And this, oh, that rosemary smells so good. Mm -hmm. So let's get a piece of this garlic, a piece of this, and some potato. Going in. Mmm. Pretty good. Whoa. Ah. I guess so. I'm falling apart. Mm. Dropping everything. Delicious. Uh-oh. There you go, guys. A quick Tuesday evening dinner with two delicious and perfectly seared uh, cooked bone-in ribeyes. Uh, upper end of the uh, choice. And oh, I would say it's almost prime. Um, you know, these things were it's really delicious. Good. It's all about the season. Yeah. Uh, we had a test run of Sassy's new air fryer. So I'll be checking out her soon to come page on greenhornbarbecuebeer.com. Go check it out. Uh, now, check it out in a couple weeks so it'll go live and she's going to have her own little food blog there and you'll see uh, more details on this. But anyway, um, be sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. Hit the bell for future updates because you don't want to miss a thing. No, you don't. And we'll see Just you saying. on the next one. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.